Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome American Red Cross Regional Preparedness Manager Kimberly Offrecht. September is National Disaster Preparedness Month to promote family and community disaster planning. The American Red Cross responds to an emergency every eight minutes. Thank you, Kimberly, for being on Impact OC. Thank you for having me, Don. Kimberly, please explain the kinds of emergencies that your organization responds to and that we should prepare for. Yeah, so the American Red Cross responds to natural disasters throughout the country. And then specifically in Orange County, we um, focus on wildfires and earthquakes as two of our major disasters in the area, but also home fires. There's a lot of different things to be prepared for. So what can we do to prepare for these kinds of disasters? So we have three steps. Get a kit, make a plan, and be informed. And if you can do those three things before a disaster strikes, you'll be prepared for um, just about any of them. There are things that you can do to add to your preparedness for all of those emergencies to specifically prepare for, um, let's say, an earthquake. Explain what we should put in a kit. Um, just about anything that you'd need. Um, you need things that you need for every day, uh, things you use every day to keep yourself healthy and independent, uh, food, water, um, a radio to listen to updates, a flashlight, um, anything that you'd need to keep yourself comfortable while you're either away from home or living without the basic necessities and basic um, utilities like power and water. Now you're talking about fires. How do you prepare a kit for a fire? So if, if you're preparing a kit for, say, a wildfire, you would just need something that you can grab and go really fast. A wildfire um, can happen anytime and it can happen without warning. So you just need something that you can grab um, with water, food, enough enough supplies for your family for a few days. But what about having fireproof things? So for, for a home fire specifically, um, you can get fireproof safes out there. But um, for a home fire, you, you just mainly you need to get yourself um, to a safe place as, as quick as possible. Now, when we talk about a kit, and I'm going to emphasize this a lot, what specific items do we need and for how each person? So for, let's say, food and water, you need enough for at least three days. Three days is the absolute minimum that I would recommend to get together. Uh, two weeks is better. And so that's enough food and water for each person um, per day. And so for water, you're going to need about a gallon per day. And that's not just for drinking. That's also for cooking and for hygiene, uh, cleaning. Um, so you, you need quite a bit of water. If you live in a warmer area, you might need a little bit more. Where do you put these items? You can put them in a, a container, um, a bag, anything that you can collect all the items together in. Uh, water is a little bit more tricky. Um, you can get the big um, containers of water um, and store those, but make sure you're st storing them in a place that they're not going to... Um, be in contact with sunlight or high heat. Now we're talking about food. What kinds mm -hmm. of food, where do you put that? Non-perishable food, um, you can put that in your kit. Anything that is going to last a few years. Uh, canned food would work, but make sure you have a can opener. Um, just it, it would be kind of difficult to eat your food if you don't have that can opener to, to use it as well. What other kinds of emergency items should we have? Uh, the, the radio to listen to updates. You can have a first aid kit just in case you have any minor injuries in your family. Um, if your family members use medications, I would also recommend having an emergency supply of those just to make sure that everybody in your family who has those special needs or specific needs have the items that they need uh, to keep themselves healthy. Yeah, but many of these items need to be cold. Absolutely. And that's uh, part of the, the part of making a plan. We need to make a plan so that we know... Um, for example, if we have a family member who has medication that needs to be stored cold, do we have a way to access ice or something that can help keep those items cold for a long duration? And of course, important papers. Where do we keep those? Um, so I have um, a bag that um, you can store like items in. You can, I've actually heard people re um, recommend putting that in the freezer. Um, it's a little bit more protected, but it's also an easy place to tell fire firefighters to look. Um, you can also keep it in a, in a fireproof or waterproof safe or container in your home. You can also back them up to the cloud so that um, if anything does happen to any of those items, you have that backup 
um, to have all the information. Um, you can also keep it at your bank at a safety deposit box. Now, you know, the other kinds of disasters are earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that? So when, for planning for an earthquake, you need to make sure that you have um, that you know where, where to go, what to do. Drop, cover, and hold on. And know all those safe places in the room. Um, every room in your home, you should have at least one safe place that you can go to when the shaking starts. Now explain what the Red Cross does when disaster strikes. We know back east they're, they're having those floods. How are, is the Red Cross responding to those? So the Red Cross responds through mass care. We have shelters. We, we um, help feed people in the area. Um, we work with local jurisdictions to help uh, respond to people who are affected by natural disasters. So what exactly does that mean when a disaster strikes? They go to the scene and they help the immediate needs of the people? Uh, usually we're working with um, county, city governments to see what they need and how we can help. And then uh, we would uh, work with the area um, to kind of respond and, and help people kind of receive those immediate needs that they, they have. Immediate needs, how long is that? It depends on how long the disaster usually lasts. A um, few days, a uh, few weeks. It, it really depends on the disaster. For the wildfires here in California, how are you responding to those? So there are a number of wildfire responses going on in the state right now. Um, we've had a couple even in our region. Um, the Red Cross will typically respond by setting up a um, disaster shelter and um, welcoming the clients from the affected area to come uh, have a place, safe place to sleep and some uh, three uh, warm meals a day. Okay, a safe place to stay, but what about clothes? Aren't there many people who are there with the clothes on their back? And uh, sometimes we have other organizations that we work with to um, provide clothing, um, but typically we're, we're focused on the, the safe place to sleep and, and the food. So do you get in touch with other organizations so that when they arrive at the shelter, if they don't have anything else, the, the other organizations will help? Uh, we often recommend that clients call 211. Um, it's a, a number that you can actually just dial on your phone, 211, and they have a um, list of resources that you can use um, to, they'll, they'll point you in the right direction to help um, kind of fulfill some of those needs. So the Red Cross is for the immediate need, your food, water, shelter, and then it's the other organizations that will help with the other kinds of needs. Yes, typically. And when that happens, do you have a lot of volunteers that help? What are their duties? Yeah, we the Red Cross is about 95% led by volunteers. And so volunteers help us staff shelters. They um, We have logistics volunteers who bring um, items from our offices to the shelters. Uh, we have volunteers who help recruit other volunteers. Um, we, we have amazing volunteers in um, throughout the country, but in our region as well, um, helping respond and um, to, to help people who have been affected by a disaster. I want you to take us through what it's like for a family who just had their house on fire and they're told they have to leave their home and there's some children. Take us through what happens when the Red Cross arrives and what happens with that family. Um, so that's usually a bit more on the response side than the preparedness side, but um, we do have a um, mass care group that would help our disaster action team that helps these families. They Oftentimes they don't have anything, um, and so we, we would help provide them with some immediate needs that they can um, use to get themselves back on their feet. Such as? Um, it, it's different for each family. But when... What could the family have done to make it easier for you to help them? Um, so on the preparedness side, we, we often um, recommend that everybody make a plan and, and know where to go. So for um, if you're talking about a home fire specifically, have a, an escape plan, an evacuation plan. Know where you're going to go. Um, have a meeting place outside the family uh, or outside the home that everyone can meet together, make sure everyone's out safe. And then... Um, have a plan on where you're going to stay afterwards. If, if you have um, family or friends that you can go stay with um, to kind of help get yourself on your feet, uh, or even if maybe a favorite hotel or um, another, another destination that, that you are familiar with that you can um, stay at to um, kind of prepare or just know, know those items ahead of time. So when there's been a fire, the hotels will, will come in handy and help out? Um, yeah, so the, you can, um, a hotel is a safe place that you could stay after. Um, it's just recommended that you have that plan and know where you're going to go, what you're able to do, and how you can um, 
respond when a disaster does happen. And you help children when this happens because it's the children that are in such shock, aside from the adults. Yeah, the Red Cross helps everybody. And explain how they specifically will help the children in the families. Um, so in, um, I would recommend that each family know, um, their, know their children and know signs of stress in children. Um, so being able to recognize those signs of stress and helping them um, cope with that stress is really important. Um, and having items in your kit um, that are, they're familiar with, their favorite toys, um, favorite snacks, um, small items that you can put in your kit to kind of help them um, be comfortable and to deal with that stress is really important. So when you say having a kit, it's a good idea to have your kit in a container in the home that's accessible to grab in the event anything happens. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. And what would it look like? Can you share what the container would look like so that it's just there and it's like mm -hmm. grabbing a piece of furniture? Yeah, so I've um, I've known people who've had it in a big duffel bag. Um, I personally have mine in a um, like plastic container, like one of those um, with the, the lid and everything. Um, so that it's bright green, we know where it is, and it's easy to access um, and just grab if we needed it. Um, I also have one in my car that's in a bag. So it's you, you also want um, not just the, the household kit that has all of your items, but you want that um, go bag that you can have that's just a few um, items, maybe three days of food and water, um, a small first aid kit, um, and some, some smaller items in a, a bag that you can just grab if you have to leave in uh, a moment's notice. You keep that in your trunk of your car? I do. I have a, a go bag in the trunk of my and car. what is in it specifically? So I have food and water for myself for a few days. I have an extra pair of shoes in my trunk that just in case um, I, I don't, I'm not wearing the most comfortable walking shoes and I have to leave on foot. Um, I also have an extra pair of shoes. Uh, I have a first aid kit, um, a flashlight. Um, I do have an extra cell phone in there um, that I can use just in case I need to access the radio app uh, so I can listen to updates. Um, and I also have your typical car items, your jumper cables, and um, some flares and stuff. So you have that in the trunk of your car. I and do. You're recommending other people do that. Yeah, it's good to be prepared for any emergency anywhere. It's not going to wait till you're at home with your family. And then at home, you have an emergency kit. Yes. And then you have a, you have a plan that you know where you're going to go in the event there's a fire or an earthquake. Yeah, we have a couple meeting places, and uh, my family has established one outside our uh, home and one outside our neighborhood. And so if we have to leave the home or leave our neighborhood, we know where we're going to meet each other um, in, in the event that we do have to um, leave and we get separated. Now, the Red Cross offers presentations to groups and schools. Explain how people can get in touch and learn about those if they want to try to educate people on a mass scale. Yeah, absolutely. We have a few different presentations that we have available, um, some for kids elementary age. Um, we have some for adults and individuals. Uh, we also have presentations that teach um, businesses how to prepare their employees and how to prepare themselves. Um, and so we have, we have just a bunch of different presentations just about for everybody. And um, any, anyone who's interested in um, scheduling those can um, either visit redcross.org slash prepare or they can um, use my, my link specifically. It's www.tinyurl.com slash uh, SoCal Prep uh, 2022. Have you found that teaching children helps? I think it does. I think that teaching children about um, responding to emergencies or preparing for emergencies, it helps them um, learn what it's going to be like and learn how they can um, help cope with that stress. We not only teach about the emergency kits and, and the um, escape plans, but we also teach them um, how to cope with a disaster by um, teaching them how to breathe deeply. And you also deal with power outages. How does yes. that work? Um, so again, it's, it's all about um, making sure you have a kit and a plan, knowing what's going to happen, what do you need, uh, what, what things do you use every day that um, you can't live without that use power, and how can you plan to be without that for a few days? Well, like for a power outage in your freezer, how often, how, how, how long can the freezer go without having power? Uh, not, I don't think it can go very long, um, but it's, it's important to know, especially if you have the, that medication that needs um, the, the refrigerator to know how to um, get, get ice, know how to get that um, 
cold storage available to you um, during that power outage. And it's also wise to learn first aid. I would recommend, yes, taking a first aid and CPR class just to have someone, at least one person in the home, who knows those life-saving skills um, that they can respond to a cardiac emergency. And when we talk about first aid, what kinds of injuries are we talking about? First aid um, classes typically teach anything from um, simple bleeding, um, heat and cold emergencies, and teaching how to respond to um, and to um, treat those, those minor injuries. How young of a child can learn all these things? Um, I'm not sure on the age. It's, it's not very young, though. It's typically uh, high school age kids. But in school, they teach people to be ready for any kind of emergency. Yes, schools um, are, are really good at doing the um, emergency drills for fire, fire drills and earthquake drills. Um, they teach kids there, too. So the primary emergencies we face here in Orange County would be? Earthquakes, wildfires, and home fires. Would you say home fires are more prevalent? Yeah, so there, there, home fires happen um, any, anywhere. It doesn't, um, they, they happen quite often. And so it's, it's really important that your family is ready to respond to a home fire. What kind of home fire? What causes these? Um, so we, we usually, when, when we're doing um, fire preparedness, we would recommend um, home uh, cooking safety. So if you're cooking in your home, um, make sure that you're keeping an eye on what you fry. Um, that's our, our memory device. Um, so if you have something on the stove, make sure you're watching that. Um, any, anything can, can catch fire, and so it's important that we're, we're watching it and making sure that we're operating our cooking items safely. Another one is um, heating and electrical equipment. If um, you have um, heating equipment, um, keeping, trying to keep your home a little bit um, on the warmer side in the winter, um, make sure you don't have anything flammable next to it. We say three feet from the heat, so keep all of those things away from the heat um, so that it, they don't get too hot and catch fire there. Um, and then finally, just have, make sure you have working smoke alarms. Yeah, I understand that when we change our clocks, it's always wise to change the smoke alarms. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should be checking your smoke alarms. I would recommend once a month um, and then practicing your um, escape drill at least um, twice. So and, that, and to get carbon dioxide alarms. Yeah, you can, you can get um, carbon dioxide alarms. We um, focus more on the home, home fire side, but a carbon monoxide alarm can be... Um, you can find those online as well as at your hardware store. What about fire extinguishers? It is uh, good to know uh, fire, fi how to use a fire extinguisher um, and to have one nearby um, in case there's a, a kitchen fire. But um, just remember, you're not going to want to put something out that's larger than about a, a, a waste basket, really small. And what kinds of information can people get from the website if they want to have it all printed out so that they can put their kit together? Uh, so the redcross.org slash prepare has information on how to prepare for all sorts of specific disasters. It also goes through the three steps, get a kit, make a plan, be informed. We have some items that people can use, download, and print that helps them put together a emergency kit, um, create that escape plan, um, and then um, some, some other items on specific disasters as well, some checklists. And do you ever find that people are prepared? Uh, sometimes there, we have people that are prepared, but a lot of times I hear um, from people that, that they weren't prepared or they wish they had prepared or that they didn't think it was going to happen to them. So what do you recommend someone do like tomorrow? They're hearing this now and they're thinking about it. What do you recommend they do? I would recommend going out, getting a, um, finding a kit. Um, oftentimes you have all the items in your home. Um, they're all right there. You can just gather them together into one uh, location. Um, sit down with your family, have that talk. Um, talk about what you would do in, in the event of any of these disasters. Um, and then know where to get information. So where, how is your county or your city going to give you information um, during that disaster? And rotating the items out. Yeah, so once you create your kit, you're not done. Um, I actually just discovered this year that I uh, my food expired. So I had to buy all new food this year. Um, so it, just keeping an eye on the expir expiration dates on your food, your water, um, even um, batteries often um, need to be refreshed every once in a while. Uh, so making sure that all of those items are ready to go is really important. So that's what this month is for. And also near your beds, you should have important shoes in case anything happens. 
Yeah, it's it's good to have a pair of shoes um, or an extra pair of glasses and a flashlight next to your bed, just in case something happens in the middle of the night. Um, there's debris or um, you, you're not able to see, then you have that flashlight and you have your, your shoes that you can get out safely. Now, explain the difference between cell phone activity and landline activity, because sometimes when there's a disaster, one or the other doesn't work. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so cell phones require the um, cell phone towers to work, and then a landline has the telephone lines. Um, both have its pros and cons. Um, often it's difficult to get a call through on a cell phone um, within the local area. Um, if that's the case, you can use a landline. Um, so I've heard also that out of state um, is easier to get a, a call out out of state than it is to get a call out locally. Um, so you can have a, an out of state contact to use to keep your family members all in touch. And that person can uh, relay information between family members if they're not able to call each other. So if a family's going to plan, what do you recommend they do in terms of planning for a disaster? Just plan. Practice that plan. Um, make the, get, get, sit down together, make a plan, and then practice it um, so that everyone knows for sure what they can do um, when a specific disaster hits. So practice what you're going to do during an earthquake. Practice what you would do during a home fire. And make sure that each person knows their responsibilities. And different scenarios, whether they're at school or at work. Absolutely. Yeah, practice everything. Uh, make sure that each member knows um, what to do in, in each area that they frequent, um, school or work, um, even the grocery store. If, if you have um, any place that you go often, you should have a plan of how your family is going to respond if an emergency happens. Because they should realize that when disaster strikes, emergency help might not be there. Absolutely. Yeah, the emergency help will do what they can, um, but often um, roads will be impassable. Um, will be first responders will be um, prioritizing care um, and you never know where you're you're going to be when that happens so when you talk about planning you need to plan to have an out-of-state contact yeah I would I would recommend having an out-of-state contact somebody that you can um, call and, and just let let them know that you're safe so that they can um, get that information to uh, other local people if you can't um, reach your, your local family. Um, another um, recommendation, sometimes a um, text can make it through when a phone call can't. Um, so you can use, utilize texting as well. Thank you, American Red Cross Regional Preparedness Manager, Kimberly Offrecht for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director, Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.